good day and thank you for watching today's edition to the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in about 5 minutes a day. In today's video, we cover special use airspace. While watching, it is recommended one follow along with a sectional and identify all special use airspace near your home airport. We will use kind of a weird acronym, TT McProns M. That is, Temporary Flight Restriction, Terminal Radar Service Area, Military Operation Area, Controlled Firing Area, Prohibited, Restricted, Alert, Warning, National Security Area, Special Flight Rules Area, and Military Training Routes. Let's dive right in. A Temporary Flight Restriction, or TFR, defines an area where air travel is restricted due to safety issues, large gatherings of people, special events, or the presence of special persons. A 60 nautical mile radius temporary flight restriction follows the president everywhere he goes. As the name suggests, one may not fly through a TFR. TFRs are not depicted on sectional or TAC charts because they update so frequently. During wildfire season, they'd have to print a new sectional every day just to keep up with the TFRs popping up everywhere. Temporary flight restrictions are released via NOTAM, generally an FDC NOTAM. To find information regarding TFRs that may affect you, we can head over to the FAA's TFR database at tfr.faa.gov. The homepage of the site looks like this. I'll typically use this drop-down menu to view NOTAMs by state. After narrowing the list down, if we found a NOTAM we think might affect us, we can click on the NOTAM's code for more information. Here, we're given more information like the issue date, beginning and ending times, and the affected area. On the side of that, one may view an image of the affected area. For a much better image, it is helpful to click this button labeled Click for Sectional. It allows one to view the temporary flight restriction pasted onto a sectional chart for a better visual idea of where the affected area lies. The For Flight application offers visual aid with temporary flight restrictions as well. On the Map Overlay drop-down menu, find the TFR option. Upon activating the TFR overlay, one may view present and some upcoming TFRs on a VFR sectional. It is recommended that private pilot applicants show up to the checkride with printed information on all NOTAMs and TFRs that may affect their checkride flight. Next up is Terminal Radar Service Area. A Terminal Radar Service Area, or TERSA, can be seen on VFR charts as a large black box surrounding Delta airspace. The altitude limits are listed in fraction format. All IFR traffic must participate in TERSA operations and procedures. VFR traffic may participate voluntarily. It is recommended that all pilots accept terminal radar approach services while in the TERSA. Pilots who do not want to participate should simply state that by saying something along the lines of negative radar service. Participating aircraft will be provided separation and assistance in approaching the airport. It'll feel a little more like talking to TRACON rather than talking to a Class Delta control tower. Military operations areas, or MOAs, have their lateral limits depicted on VFR charts by this red striped pattern shown here. Within this area, VFR pilots should remain extremely alert. Military pilots may be performing anything from air combat tactics to intercepts to low-level formation flying, all possibly in excess of 250 knots. Look at the chart tablature for additional information regarding MOAs. Here, we have the name, vertical limits, time of use, controlling agency, and the frequencies on which to reach the controlling agency. The status of MOAs change constantly. It is recommended that pilots contact the nearest flight service station for information regarding the status of the MOA, and to contact the MOAs controlling agency that we found on the tabs prior to entering the MOA. Controlled firing areas contain activities which may be hazardous to aircraft. However, there is no need to chart them because activities are suspended immediately when spotter aircraft, radar, or ground lookout positions indicate an aircraft might be approaching the area. For this reason, controlled firing areas do not need to be depicted on charts. We never interact with controlled firing areas. We simply need to know that they exist. Prohibited areas contain airspace within which the flight of aircraft is prohibited. These areas are established either for security reasons or other reasons of national welfare. Another example of prohibited airspace would be the area surrounding Washington, D.C. These areas are depicted on the sectional by a blue striped pattern with a code beginning with the letter P or PAPA. 
Restricted areas contain airspace which is subject to restrictions. These areas are depicted by a blue striped pattern coupled with a code beginning with R. Restricted areas may contain unusual or invisible hazards to aircraft, such as artillery or guided missiles. Entering restricted areas without authorization from the controlling agency may be extremely hazardous to the aircraft and its occupants. We'll want to contact the controlling agency to request entry. Plan to avoid restricted airspace altogether as aircraft are rarely given the chance to enter while the area is active. Look at the chart tablature for additional information regarding restricted airspace. Here we have the name, vertical limits, time of use, controlling agency, and the frequencies on which to reach the controlling agency. Alert areas notify pilots of areas that may contain a high volume of pilot training or an unusual type of aerial activity. In this case, we expect a lot of student pilot training. Alert areas are depicted on the charts by a red striped pattern. Inside, we expect to see a coded name beginning with alpha. As the name would suggest, pilots operating in alert areas should remain on high alert. A warning area includes airspace beginning from 3 nautical miles from the U.S. coast and extending outward from there. Warning areas are depicted by a blue striped pattern labeled with a W. These areas potentially contain activity that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft and may be located over domestic waters, international waters, or both. National Security Areas, or NSAs, are established at locations where there is a requirement for increased security and safety of ground facilities. These areas are depicted in thick red dashes. Instructions are listed nearby. Pilots are requested to avoid flying through any depicted NSA. When it is necessary to provide a greater level of security and safety, flight in NSAs may be temporarily prohibited. This information would be released as a notum or notice to airmen. Special flight rules areas boundaries are depicted on VFR charts by these blue castle top or tooth patterns. Within these boundaries, pilots must adhere to special air traffic rules. These rules are listed in FAR Part 93. Additional information and procedures regarding individual special flight rules areas can be researched at FAAsafety.gov. Military training routes are depicted by these thin grayish lines shown here in one of a few ways. Either we'll see VR or IR, followed by either a three or four digit number. VR shows routes performed under visual flight rules, and IR are performed under IFR. Routes with a three digit code run above 1,500 feet AGL, while routes followed by the larger four digit code are performed entirely below 1,500 feet AGL. Military pilots on these routes may be performing unusual activities often in excess of 250 knots. For additional information regarding training routes, one could refer to the Department of Defense Flight Information Publication, or FLIP chart, created primarily for military users. This concludes today's video over special use airspace. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.